Elke here and part five of the series of six uh, presentations on diving with oceanic white tip sharks here in Egypt. Uh, actually, part four concluded the safe diving practices and guidelines, the practical side of this one. And now in part five, I actually want to give a quick summary of all the information that I think should be given to guests before they're jumping in the water with oceanics for the first time. Yeah, so this standalone is a bit of a help or a reference point uh, for briefings that guides can give on their liverboards before people are potentially meeting these oceanics. Uh, it's going to be bullet point style because uh, the details and some exemplary videos for these guidelines can be found in parts three and four. So it starts with explaining to these guests that they're basically about to meet um, a shark. And for a lot of people, that is quite scary. So we have to find the line between preparing people for what might happen, might happen, uh, and not scaring the hell out of them so that they don't even want to jump in the water anymore. Yeah? So this is a bit of a responsibility, and this is a bit of a, yeah, a judgment call. How do you best do that, and how much do you say or show people beforehand? Uh, and of course, some divers are still worried about diving with sharks. So we should be honest. Diving with sharks is not risk-free. But of course, scuba diving alone is not risk-free. We're taking a risk just by depending on this basically technology and the equipment to survive in this medium. But the risk diving with sharks is absolutely minimal. All the numbers are proving that. Uh, and that is even true for sharks like Oceanics that have such a bad reputation actually globally. Yeah, the risk is very, very small because we can be quite confident in saying that sharks generally are not dangerous to people. But of course, it's a wild predator. They're superior to us. So we still have to make sure that our presence and our behavior with them is not creating dangerous situation. Yeah, so this is the important bits that we can say to people before we even start the briefing. And then when it comes to the briefing and preparing them, there's a few things that are important. First of all, they need to understand what they will be dealing with. So again, oceanics, self-confident, inquisitive wild predators. So we need to respect them for what they are. Yeah? Do not forget what you're dealing with. Explain to people that there will be no swimming or snorkeling in any areas where oceanics could be around. And that means if you're doing a marine trip, park trip, brothers, they don't lose Elphinstone, there is no snorkeling the whole week. It's very, very simple. Or swimming off the back for whatever reason. And then, of course, the most important behavioral rules that they should follow underwater. And again, mentioned before, there's one really easy headline uh, that sums up most of these behavioral rules. And this is avoid behaving like potential prey for them. So the different points that we talked about, stay calm, avoid erratic movements, stay alert, look around so that you can keep your eyes on the sharks that are around you, control your buoyancy at all times, and make sure that you don't spend any more time on the surface than you absolutely have to. Yeah, this is the main uh, guidelines for how to behave with oceanics underwater. Then if you're closely approached by a shark, take a vertical position. Yeah, fins down, so that means you can keep your eyes on them very easily without a lot of movement. You can make minimal fin movements and you can pivot and have the chance to look everywhere for the shark or sharks that are anywhere in the area. Then, if the shark comes very close to you, within touching distance, 50, 30 centimeters, there's two things you can do. Uh, you can come and get a buffer in there, any inanimate object that you might carry. You have your fins with you, you might have a camera or the aforementioned shark stick. Just as a buffer, not as a weapon, just to make sure that it's not physically touching you, or very close range, push a proper water wave towards the head or gill area to make it turn away. Yeah, this is the two main options for a shark that is within almost touching distance to you. And of course, if absolutely necessary, last resort, use your hand to gently guide a shark from, away from you, but make sure that you're not overly aggressive because any aggression from your side might trigger a defensive reaction, meaning a bite from the shark, actually. And this is obviously something we want to avoid. If you notice that a shark becomes agitated or excited, or you see them feeding, 
stay away from them. Give them space, stay in a safe distance, or if more sharks are joining this activity, even leave the area. As long as you do this in a calm and orderly fashion, there is no problem. These guys are then focusing on something totally different, so you can safely back out of the situation and give them the space that they need so that there's no problems. And of course, if you stay close to your body or your group, you can avoid very close approaches with them. And of course, also, if you stay close to the reef wall throughout most of the dive, that also minimizes the chances for encounters with oceanic. And as far as I'm concerned, especially the last one here, the last point, is a very important one to explain to people that are not diving with a guide. Yeah, from Liverpool's experience, divers generally get this option on most uh, safaris but they need to understand what the consequences of the different dive plans are. If they wander out into the blue, they have a good chance of being very closely approached and investigated by a shark like this. So if you're not sure you're happy with this, it's much safer to stay close to the reef wall for the majority of your dive uh, so that this doesn't happen. And then of course people need to understand the procedures to safely enter and exit the water. Starts with checking for oceanics before you enter, either off the back of the boat or by zodiac. Uh, the next thing is that you drop down to five meters as quickly as possible, no matter how you get in the water, but five meters should be the minimum depth to get to as quickly as possible. And again, for Zodiac pickups, be efficient. Um, if necessary, send people up singly or in body pairs, uh, while the rest of the group can stay on safety stop level, so that there's not 10, 12 people all on the surface taking off their kit, creating a lot of commotion and activity, which will attract oceanics to them. And again, mentioned just before, um, if it's necessary because you have very nervous uh, divers that really don't like the idea of spending any kind of time on the surface when there's oceanics around the zodiac, inflate, they can inflate their BCDs, leave the scuba unit floating around, get themselves in the zodiac, and then they can pick up the unit afterwards. Yeah, this would be a quick way to get away from there. And of course, please make sure both to your guests and your zodiac drivers that with oceanics in the area, it is not an option to throw a line from the back of the zodiac and pull the people on the surface back to the big boat. That is not safe. It's like putting bait for zodiacs, uh, for, sorry, for oceanics. Uh, so that should not happen under any circumstance with oceanics around. And this is pretty much what I think is the most important thing that guests should be aware of. And of course, then it's up to the guides, depending on how likely it is to really see oceanics if any video material or anything else should be added to this one. And that concludes part number five. Thank you very much.